Hello students! Today we are taking a trip beneath the sea to learn how looks are everything. Some animals beneath the sea use bright colors and patterns to survive. This lionfish uses his dramatic orange stripes and poisonous spines to scare away would-be predators. When a larger fish or even a shark sees a lionfish, they know that those stripes mean trouble and they uh, leave the lionfish alone. Clownfish too have bright colors and a striped pattern that tell other fish to stay away. Uh, the clownfish, while it doesn't have venom like the lionfish does, it makes its home in sea anemones, which are deadly to most fish, but the clownfish enjoys a harmonious relationship with the sea anemone. The sea anemone lets him swim around and make his home within them, while the clownfish cleans and looks after the anemones. This funny looking fish is called a longhorn cowfish, and it uses bright colors and spots to scare away predators as well. Like the lionfish, he has a toxin that could be deadly for some fish. So when a large fish or a shark sees a, a cowfish, they know by those spots and that bright yellow color that this one is a fish to stay away from. Not only does he have toxins, but he also has those pointy, pointy horns and spines that make it difficult to eat anyway. So bright colors and patterns not only scare away predators, but they can also contribute in finding a mate. For example, this yellow fish will be able to spot similar fish very easily among uh, thousands of different fish. So these very dramatic patterns play a role in fish finding each other and being able to find a mate. Bright colors also play a role in camouflage. If a fish makes its home within a bright colorful reef, like the ones in Hawaii or Australia, bright colors could help it blend in with its environment. And here we have a familiar fish, just like the one from Finding Nemo, Dory, the blue uh, eccentric fish, making use of bright colors and dramatic patterns as well. So not all fish use bright colors, um, but here we have another example of a fish using a certain pattern to blend in with his surroundings. This member of the ray family, uh, while flat, also blends in with the sand because of the tan and spotted pattern on his body. And he can also bury himself by uh, dusting himself with the sand on the seafloor, hiding himself from predators, and also making himself invisible to smaller fish that he might want to snack on. And here we have a picture of a pharaoh cuttlefish. Now pharaoh cuttlefish are not limited to one color. This particular cuttlefish is a light tan color because of the sand he is swimming over, but if he was to swim over some darker sand, he could almost instantly change his color to match that sand, making him almost invisible to large, mean fish that want to make him a snack. Now here we have a scary looking fellow. This honeycomb moray eel while bright yellow and leopard spotted in this photo, uh, he might not blend in so well, but if he was in his natural habitat of a very colorful coral reef, he would blend in pretty well, making it easy for him to sneak up on tiny fish for his, uh, for his own dinner. Now can you spot the fish in this photo? He is very camouflaged as he has dark and light spots and a rough texture that blends in very nicely with the pebbles that he is swimming on. 
here again we have a fish that blends in very nicely with the rocks. It's kind of hard to find the fish in this photo, but you can make him out with by his fins and eyes. His body is the same color and pattern as the rocks he's living in, and he does a very good job of, of looking exactly like a rock, making it hard for larger fish to find him. Here we have a photo of the starry flounder. A flounder, while as a baby is like many normal fish, it actually changes its, its body and the way it swims as it grows up. Its eye moves to the other side of his body, making it so both eyes are on one side of his body, and he turns sideways and begins swimming parallel with the sea floor and lying flat on the sand and rocks on the sea floor. And here we see an example of one that has blended in very nicely with the dark pebbles that it swims over. And similar to that flounder, we have a speckled sand dab, which does quite the same thing. And here we have um, one blending in nicely with the tan pebbles that it makes its home on. And here we have a few baby skates that have blended in nicely with their sea floor. One of them is almost buried in the pebbles, while the other one blends in nicely just with the uh, color and pattern of his body. And here we have a nice picture of a very large starry flounder that has blended in nicely with the brown sand that he swims along. Now while, while flounders, halibuts, and rays are all flat and can lie on this uh, sea floor and blend in very nicely, sometimes they need to swim up into the water uh, to find food, or to uh, find a mate. Now, this can be kind of dangerous for these flat fish as their silhouette can give them away to larger fish or sharks who might be swimming below them. But you'll notice in this picture all the halibuts and the ray in the back there have white bellies. And these white bellies make it so when a shark looks up towards the surface of the ocean it is less noticeable. These halibuts and rays are less noticeable to those sharks because their white bellies uh, blend in nicely with the white or lighter color of the surface of the ocean. Here we have a leopard shark that also util utilizes patterns to blend in with his surroundings. If this leopard shark was in a grassy area or even um, a rocky area, he might blend in very nicely, making it easy for him to sneak up on small fish. Now there are other animals in the sea that imitate other creatures in order to uh, s keep away from predators or to sneak up on their own food. This basket star looks more like a colony of coral or some sort of seaweed uh, rather than a typical sea star, making it uh, a little easier to hide from animals that might like to, to eat a sea star. And similarly, this feather star doesn't look like a sea star at all. He looks like a brown piece of seaweed, making it easy for him to hide and sneak up on animals that he would like to eat. And this decorator crab, while he doesn't imitate other sea creatures himself, he decorates his body to make it look like he is just a uh, big bunch of seaweed or um, marine waste. He gathers seaweed and garbage and anything else he can get and puts it all over his body to blend in. 
Now here we have a photo of some seaweed, but can you spot the fish in this photo? We have three bay pipefish in this picture, and they blend in very well with the tall, skinny, green seaweed that they like to swim in, making it almost impossible for uh, predators to find them. So if you found these fish interesting and you would like to learn more about marine camouflage, visit the Oregon Coast Aquarium in Newport, Oregon.